a bad joke. You've dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. What is going on YouTube? It's Brendan for Market Makers. The next wave down is about to begin. I've been sharing the pattern with you for a couple of weeks. You guys, I know you're going to be excited about this video. We're talking about the S&P losing a thousand handles, going to our target of 3141. Bitcoin getting cut in half. The Nasdaq pulling down from 13,000 to 9,500 or 9,200. We're going to go over the other assets as well in this video because our pivot remember starts on Friday of this upcoming week. We have the CPI coming out, I believe on Wednesday, the 12th. So we have a lot of catalysts in the market as well as our pattern of decay that's been tracking absolutely beautiful. And it's all in this video. Guys, this video is going to be brought to you by Simple FX. If you want to trade any of these assets that I show you here in the video, please do check them out. They help sponsor the channel. You can get up to a $5,000 instant first time deposit bonus if you want to check out that platform their platform is absolutely awesome many of us trade on that platform you guys will love it the information is in the video description as well as in the youtube comments and simple effects as well as bing x if you want a traditional crypto exchange will pay for you to join our discord for a free month so check that out take advantage of that offer all that information is in the youtube comments pinned as well as in the video description the telegram for lee is there as well if you have any questions about getting on the exchange getting into the discord message Lee. Let's get into this. All right, guys. So lots of channels can give you a bullish view, can give you a bearish view. How many channels give you the exact day, the exact targets, the exact trades, and how many of those channels have been right on these big movements? We're going to go over once again, the dot-com pattern here on the left, as well as the pattern on the right, the modern day market. But it's very important for you guys to understand if you're watching like say CNBC, a business channel here in the U.S. You'll see Mike Wilson from Morgan Stanley release notes or come on for interviews, and he's considered a bear because he said the market still has deeper to go. He has around 3,000 for the S&P. Can't give you a date, can't give you a trade. He just thinks the market is coming down to 3,000 for an earnings recession. Marco Kalanovic, JP Morgan, the world's largest investment bank, also has a low 3,000s, okay? They'd basically say sell into rallies. So, I want to share with you a few guys that helped shape my trading career over the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Jeremy Grantham, Scott Minard, and Stanley Druckenmiller. We've made a little montage for you of how they view the markets overall. I think you guys will really enjoy this. I'm going to go ahead and play that. Lee, go ahead and run that. We'll talk about it on the other side. I only specialize in what I call the really great bubbles. If you go back to 1929 to 2000, uh, to Japan, and, and the housing, the housing part of the housing bubble, and you ask, how did conditions look? Profit margins looked great. The forecast was great. There was no chance of a, of a recession. A few months ago, smart people were saying there was a 20% chance of a recession in three years. I mean, it is quite amazing. And what happens after the bubbles break is there's always a recession pretty quickly. And um, people never get it. People never forecast it. You know, look, if you take the history of the United States since the, the late 70s, um, I would call monetary policy a policy of bubble to bubble. For instance, you know, to save the, the, the economy after the stock market crash, Right, the Fed cut rates and overinflated commercial real estate, and then we had to bail out the banks with the Resolution Trust Corporation. So then once things calmed down again, investors no longer thought that commercial real estate was safe, and they inflated the internet bubble to the wealth effect to keep the economy going. And then, of course, it 
went bust, and so then people didn't feel safe in stocks, so they started buying homes. And we, we played that out, and, and it bust. And so we're, 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 my attitude is when you look at the amount of leverage uh, in corporate America uh, and where we are today, you've, you, you definitely are inflating a bubble here in credit. What will be the wealth effect of this? How much money do you anticipate people will lose? I, I think it would be unlikely that the market would not come down by 50% from its peak. The broad market, the S&P. And it would be unusual if the specs did not do worse than that. Crypto collapse the way it is. I think it's got more downside. To more it. downside. More down. How much more? Well, you know, um, when I look at the Bitcoin, which the technicals have been better than anything else, when you we break, you know, below thirty thousand consistently, eight thousand is the ultimate bottom. The last ten years of the bull market, you put it all in hyperdrive with thirty trillion of QE and zero rates. Now the consequences of that are born, and all those factors that cause that bull market, they're not only stopping, they're reversing. Every one of them. We're going from QE to QT, unless you live in England this week. <laughs> um, they're really unfolding. So when I put all that together, the one thing I, I, I bristle a little about when I hear people on your, on, on your network is they say, well, I'm bearish, but I'm bullish for the long term. Look, you can have a period of 15, 20 years, 10 years where the market doesn't go anywhere. That doesn't mean you can't make money. You could have made money, plenty of money in the 70s at various times. We had two 60% rallies. I'm not saying, you know, go get another job and you can't do stocks. I'm just saying we've had a hurricane behind us for 30 or 40 years and it's reversing. And I wouldn't be surprised, in fact, it's my central forecast, the Dow won't be much higher in 10 years than it is today. So that was Jeremy Grantham there to kick it off, talking about that's May of 2022. And his price target for the S&P, he'd be surprised if it didn't come down by at least 50%. And Jeremy Grantham, why is that not notable? Jeremy Grantham correctly predicted and traded the 89 Japanese bubble, the uh, dot-com bubble, the great financial crisis, actually called the bottom to the day in March of 2009. Scott Minard, same thing successfully avoided the dot-com crisis, successfully avoided and traded the great financial crisis. And he says the market's a Ponzi scheme, going from bubble to bubble. Stan Drunkenmiller. Now, you guys have heard me say this statistic before. So 84% of the money managers you see on TV and on Twitter finance and on YouTube cannot beat the S&P over a 10-year period. That means your grandmother doing passive investing, just buying the index, will beat 84% of the people that you see on TV. Over a 20-year period, 93% of these active money managers cannot beat the S&P. Stan Druckenmiller, again, all three of them are billionaires. Stan Druckenmiller, over a 30 30-year career in Wall Street, average 30-plus percent returns. Remember, the S&P average prior to the GFC was 8%. So he almost quadrupled the normal return on the S&P each year over his 30-year uh, uh, history on Wall Street. So these three guys are all self-made billionaires. Minard had almost half a trillion dollars of asset un assets under management. Their market view, I believe, is dead on. I, I totally agree with Stan. I think the all-time highs are in for the rest of the decade. And guys, this is a money-making opportunity, which is why I started this channel to help as many people be able to fulfill their dream like I did with mine, walk away from my job and just day trade full time because this is this is what I'm passionate about as you guys know that watch this channel. And I know many of you are as well. So let's go ahead and jump into this and review this pivot pattern because guys, that day is coming up quick. It's coming up quick. So on the left, dot com. It's the E-mini on the weekly, on the right, modern market. Nine bars, 63 days, your first rally up to try to defeat the trend line from the all-time high, followed by 16 bars, 112 days, and then 10 bars between tops, 70 days, 10 bars between tops, 
for your massive co-equal high double top that you made on the weekly time frame before it broke down and you went down 30 plus percent. What did you do in the modern market? The exact same candlestick rally, nine bars, 63 days, 16 bars, 112 days, break the trend line, print your massive co-equal high double top of 10 bars, 70 days. And of course our pivot April 14th coming up guys this Friday. Let's go ahead and look at this on our esoteric pattern with our 43 day pivots. So when you look at this on the daily time frame, the exact target that I gave you 4143 was struck and with the 4145 got a retracement. And then what shape would you be printing here guys? You're printing yet another double top. Somebody in the previous comments in my previous video said, man, you just, you love talking about these double tops. The market loves to make double tops. Guys, here's the previous trade I shared with you at 4180 for a 9% move. But this move is different because I believe this move will be our level change coming on the S&P. Because not only do we have the 43 day pattern, which means we're making our top here on April 14th, okay? And then coming down for our bottom in June, which would be the S&P around 3150, let's call it. 3141 was my exact target. Then you're rallying up for your target in August, for your top in August, and then rallying back down for your final bottom in October. And I'm gonna show you those targets on another chart. But not only are we doing this pattern, this is the exact same rally and decay, growth and decay pattern we did last year. I showed you this in a previous video. Your end of March, early April, your sell-off of 20%, right? Just after our red alert warning here, the spring equinox. When did we bottom, guys? We bottomed in June. You see that? June 16th, Thursday. And then we rallied up. And now we rallied up to August. And then we bottomed in October. And this is the current five plus month long rally we've been on. So once again, just like in .com, you're going to bottom for your final bottom in October after you make this series of moves and massive life-changing wealth is possible here on this pattern and here as this market plays out. Let's look at this on the daily targets here. So guys, 4143, that's the number I gave you. We got our retracement and of course, here's our 45 angle and here's our pivot date, okay? April 14th. So what we have though, we have some other catalysts coming in the market. We have the CPI coming out on the 12th. If the CPI comes in low, be aware, you can get massive wicks. This was a CPI wick and this candle was 39.82 to 41.41, okay? You can get massive wicks. So I'm showing you this because the 41.43 to 41.80 range played perfectly here. So far played perfectly here played perfectly here, played perfectly here, and of course played perfectly here. This was the one, the major rally that got above that. So that's that 1618 at 4289. But what I anticipate happening, and again, this is my, I guess, uh, forecast for what I think is going to happen next week. We could easily rally up into the CPI. The CPI is supposed to come in lower. Okay. If the CPI comes in lower, look for the S&P to retest 4143, which you're at 41115. So this is quite easily to retest it, but really watch that 4180 to 4200. And if you get very bullish Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, watch to see how close to that 1618 at 4289 you could get. Okay. But what I think realistically can happen here is you're going to make your co-equal high just like you did in .com, but here you did get up to basically 4200. So be aware of that. You have like an $85 range where you could see the S&P come up and try to retest that 41. 95, 4200, right there on your pivot before you come down for that next move down. And again, this should be the level change. So let's look at this. Here's your targets on your weekly. What do I mean by level change? Guys, remember my boom bust bubble video, the everything bubble is linked at the end of this video. If you haven't seen it, watch that to get caught up. But we're looking at, we're in denial right now. You hit the minus 28%, which was your 618 at 3593, weekly time frame of the S&P. Your next level down is FOMO, right? Because denial is this is not a bear market. You see it all the time. You see the people on YouTube. You see the people on the business news. It's not a bear market. It's just a correction. The economy's strong. You know, great president. Everything's fantastic. Everything's great. Everything's going up. Well, the realization's coming into place now where the big financial houses are also saying sell 
sell the rallies. Okay. They're saying sell the rallies. And of course, once this breaks down, you're going to the FOMO phase. Why is this the FOMO phase, guys? This is minus 35%. 3141 on the S&P because the S&P historically will trade at roughly minus 31 33 to 35% entering a recession over uh, the market history. So for all the big people that are bears talking about Marco Kolanovic, Mike Wilson again JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley, they all think this is the final washout because now you've really devalued the S&P. This is where it should be. So I'm going to trade this round that 3141 when you make that bottom and again that number could be 3000 guys it could be 3250 this is a target here based on the one fib but that big move down that thousand point drop that move down this is going to create a nice rally going back up into our top in August before we sell off for that final bottom in October okay so that's the FOMO rally, guys. Fear of missing out. Everybody wants to get on here. Finally, the washout happened. Now we can move up. But if that rally fails, this is when it becomes a bubble. If you come down to this level and you make your bottom and you try to move up and you sweep your low, this is when you're going to the bubble target that's been hit in every single previous bubble. The disgust phase. This is S&P at 2,400, and I don't think it would stop at 2,400. My personal target is a 61% drawdown at 1,888. I do believe this is a generational bubble, the largest bubble, the first multi-pronged bubble, talking about real estate, talking about equities, talking about the debt market. This is the first multi-pronged bubble this country has ever had, and I think you're going to overshoot here, go past the 1618, and you'll see this somewhere between 1888 and 2000. Again, Jeremy Grantham has his target at 2000, and I think that's where, you're, where you will end up. That's all predicated on whether or not you lose the FOMO rally. If you lose the FOMO rally and you sweep your low, you're coming down to this target. The great thing is, is we have the pivots, guys. We have the exact pivots if they continue to play out to show us where to trade this marketplace. So let's go ahead and look at what's happening right now with the S&P. So I did some sequencing here. I want to show you the volatility is really starting to compress. This shows you a big move is coming in. You were averaging these 20% moves up and down, up and down based off our 43 day pivots. Okay. And now notice they shrunk to about 9% moves, 9%, 11%, 8%, almost nine, 9%. Nine Coming up to our pivot, you're about to have that next 20 to 25% move, which will drop you down to our target. Another way to look at volatility, remember volatility, when you're compressing it, it's like a spring. Eventually it'll snap and explode. Okay, another way to look at it, specifically on the S&P, is complacency on the VIX. Going back 20 years, all the way back to dot-com, 1718 has been a bear market top on your rallies. You're about to hit it again. You're at 18 spot 40. As you can see, every time you've come to this trend line, you've had big reactions in the marketplace. We have earnings season coming up. So if we start rallying Monday, Tuesday into the CPI, who knows what happens the day of the CPI? If it comes in low, you can see a big wick up and the same day, a big wick down or the next day, a big wick down. That's why I'm trading this vis-a-vis -vis targets, that 41, 43 to say 4,200 is that sweet spot. I'm really looking forward to get in on my shorts on the S&P, okay? And I expect to see the VIX start to push back up with our pivot date coming up next Friday. What's also interesting about our pivot date, JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, two of the largest banks are reporting on the 14th. It's not so much their reporting. Remember, this is prior quarter. It's their guidance, what they see coming out for the year. And that could set the tone for a red wave to subsequently follow, giving us confirmation of our pivot. Looking at the German 40, guys, I gave you that 15,733. That target was hit. You can see this as well. The volume across all the indices, the S&P, German 40 is bad, okay? You have bad volume. You have a key level hit. This will track and trade with the S&P, made its October bottom, outperformed on the rally, similar to the NASDAQ. I do anticipate this will have a next major level change down if the S&P continues its level change down. You're looking at the DAX coming down to 11.3 or maybe 10,000 
on this level change drop, okay? And of course, that final target would be 85.15, bringing you back to your pandemic low. And if you overshoot like the S&P, I also anticipate will, you could look between 6,500 and 7,000 on the DAX. That's down the road. We're looking at the next level down, breaking this massive weekly double top, which you have in two ways. On top of your Wyckoff, there's your double top. And of course, your larger double top here on a weekly time frame, giving you this massive move down uh, in, in the works. Let's go ahead and look at this on the daily. Again, here's your first double top. Hit our target, 15,733, as you can see, retrace, just like the S&P coming back up. Watch in this range, 15,733 to 15,846. If you're interested in trading this, your pivot date for the S&P right here, April 14th. Looking for some volatility in here till this pivot date. And then I'm looking for that confirmation with a move down. Look at your volume on the DAX. This last volume here, to get this nice little bounce on this last candle, just give me an idea. That last bar was 15,714. The low was 15,530. So basically a 200 point bar. That was your lowest volume volume bar on the DAX going all the way back to mid January. Okay. The volume is very bad on the indices. You have your money flow approaching overbought. You're still bearish on your volume. Obviously this range is where I like this opportunity to get in here on a short 15,733 to 15,846 approaching our pivot. Let's look at the French 40. French 40 also on top of its Wyckoff hit our target of the 1618 at 7364. Again, I like this opportunity here as well in a three day chart, massive double top, as well as a massive double top if you zoomed out on the weekly as well. So I have the French 40 on this next wave down, guys. Let's see if I have it here on this next target. Oh, I got to do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So the French 40, let's go ahead and get some targets here for you. That one fib is basically where your neckline would be. You see that'd be retesting your October low. So let's look at and see where this could get to on the 1272, 5161. That's kind of my next target there, but if it doesn't perform as badly as some of the other indices, let's check out the one spot 128. That would be 5415. So this next wave down, you should see strong selling. And remember, I know this seems like a huge drop. The front, the reason I'm showing you the French 40 and the DAX is because they both outperformed the S&P. They rallied up majorly. Actually, the French 40 made a new all-time high. But the concept of a level change is sweeping these October lows. So you're going to retest these October lows, okay? And remember, price moves in waves. It doesn't mean you're going straight down. But we have that June bottom as the target. So you're going to have volatility. You're going to test these October lows on the S&P, the NASDAQ, the DAX, the French 40. If you lose them, where is it going? And that's when I'm looking at these targets, 5161. So I expect this decay because these will track with the S&P. As you can see, there's your October bottom, late September, early October, and then your rally up. Let's go ahead and look at this on the daily chart as well. Volume is horrible on this rally up as again, all of the indices are looking at this on your volume ratio, still bearish on volume. And again, that key area guys, 73.64, trade this with the volatility in the S&P. If the S&P does move up to that 4140 to 4200, look and see where this would be on the CAC, but it should be right around this area of 73.64. Let's go ahead and bounce for the Bitcoin. Bitcoin, but over the wave pattern. And again, where we have our targets on Bitcoin, we're in that FOMO phase, expecting a second FOMO rally on this decline at the 1414. That would bring Bitcoin down to 12,759, doing two for one when it comes to crypto, right? Versus equities. So we're expecting this to move down. And right now you're trading at almost 28K. So guys, you're looking at greater than a 50% uh, drop in Bitcoin. So this is why this is so important to understand this level change. Now, again, if you think Bitcoin is decoupled, well, that's okay. If that's what you think is happening with Bitcoin, I don't think it is. I think you're going to move exactly with the equities and you're going to see this thing fall 56% to the next target. Get your nice rally up. If we Again, if we sweep that low, if the rally fails and you sweep that low, that's when you're coming down to your discuss phase. Miner had that 8K target. Target. I have 4K to 8K. That's where I'm targeting. That would be a 93% decline after that rally 
failure. Looking at Bitcoin on the daily, this is kind of a mess up here. We have that key resistance quadrant of 27,821. Again, you can see you're just stacking candles up here. This area, let's go ahead and look at this on the eight-hour time frame. Looks a little bit better. Eight-hour time frame. Again, you got to understand what you're doing here. If the S&P runs up Monday, Tuesday, it doesn't have to. I'm just saying based on previous CPI cycles, knowing that the permabulls are getting super excited, uh, looking at the volume uh, volume divergence that we have, Bitcoin could move up stronger. As a matter of fact, it will. If the S&P moves up, you could see Bitcoin move up. So we want to look at the range here. You've been in this range since basically March 23rd, 28,904. You got one wick above it. It's a strong area to potentially look at. You're trading at 27,924, but you want to see how strong that rally is with the CPI, okay? Because we have that higher level of 29,561 as well. And then you have, then you start kissing that 33 thousand range based on what bitcoin's doing you know it's really going to be tied to what the s p and the nasdaq do how strong do they rally next week before we make that local high on that friday pivot that's very key to understand so if you get a strong rally off the cpi you can see bitcoin move up but look at your previous areas of resistance here so watch basically 28.9 and then you have your higher level 31,463 again is basically where I would have this topping out if you did get a big impulse up. But I would trade this and confluence what's happening in the equity markets. If the equity markets start dumping on Friday or Thursday, or they get a big volatility wick and then they start dumping after the CPI print, then look at what Bitcoin's doing because Bitcoin likes to clear shorts. It's a controlled asset on centralized exchanges. They like to clear shorts out, do something like that, and then do something like that. So be aware of that, what's happening with the equities. So let's go ahead and look at the NASDAQ on the three-day chart. I told you I like the Nasdaq at 13.1. I like it at 13.1 to 13.4. We of course hit the 13.1. We're trading below it, 13.078. Let's see what happens if we get any type of CPI rally. The Nasdaq outperformed. This is an asset I'm definitely interested in shorting. You can see this on the daily chart. We got up to that 13.2 or like 13.225. I like this at the 1618 a lot at 13.417. So if we get a CPI rally, and again you printed that double top, right? You get a CPI rally. I'm looking for this thing to kiss that by Friday, okay? 13,417. If it doesn't, and we just get a co-equal high back here at 13,2, that's my sweet spot, 13,2 to 13,4, right there in that range. I want to be wearing shorts through this earnings season as I anticipate a lot of these companies. Samsung just posted uh, their earnings are the weakest they've been since 2007 or 2008 in electronics titan. I think this is going to be a bad earnings season, and I think the big money is going to flip the switch and start dumping on the market, guys. Let's go ahead and look at Tesla. Tesla, I shared this short with you guys at 208. So this is an entry point that I liked. And of course, Tesla got all the way down all the way down to what 179 an excellent drop if we did rally back up to test that 208 in between 208 and 220 it's an area i like tesla printing this gorgeous double top tesla likes to print those double tops okay if it just continues to hold in this area and continue to fall we have people that already took profits because that was an excellent move in tesla or you could be holding this waiting for the larger move down because again you're where you've tested already was $101. So if you sweep this low, you're going lower. You're going to see sub $100 Tesla, I believe, on this next wave down. So between now and June, or next next Friday in June, I think you're going to see that $70 to you know $55 to $75 range for Tesla because you already hit $100. And this next wave down could be the biggest wave down yet. Let's go ahead and look at first solar. First solar, again, I gave you that short at 217, dropped all the way down to under $200, another nice move. I like the resistance level, the same area. If first solar somehow rallied because the market rallies off a of low CPI, then watch that 217 carefully up to that 228. And of course, the volume has been very bad, except for the selling. That is something that you see over and over again across the indices, across many individual stocks as well. Looking at micro strategy. I added something new for you guys, because as you guys know, Michael Saylor has been buying more Bitcoin. This man loves to buy tops. So he loves to buy tops. Looking at MicroStrategy on a three-day chart, 
Beautiful double top formed right here at your 304 on the stock price. Stock's at 290. Guys, you're, the 618 is at 288. If this can hold up here and come up to that one fib at 324, that would be fantastic. I do like this. If the market rallies and this gets a little bit more candle wick action up here like this, I do like MicroStrategy to complete this double top. And MicroStrategy, again, that target here for that next wave down, $102 is almost trading at $300. Understand, massive, massive, what, 66% drop to come down to this level, okay? If you can get this up here between, I'd say, I'd love to see it at 304 again. Get this back up here at 295, 304. If the market rallies between 304 and 324, this is setting up for a gorgeous trade as well because this price action will be heavily tied to Bitcoin. And if the thesis is correct, if the pattern continues to play out, you will see Bitcoin get cut in half by more than half and you will see MicroStrategy get cut in by more than half from its current trading price action, okay? So that's what I'm tracking here. Guys, let's look at gold and silver and we'll wrap this up and you guys can go enjoy your Easter with your family. I was doing some more deep dives on this because in my heart, I am a metals bull, but I cannot get past the price action of the GFC, okay? The mini crash cycle, the level reset, your 2055, 2055, upcoming your 2055, and you're getting close to it. The FIB's been playing out beautifully, got up above 2023. I'm looking at the volume, guys. The volume looks awful, just like on the indices. I'm looking at the MFI coming up to be overbought in the three-day chart every time it's done this. It got overbought here. So you're in this divergence here, right? So it got overbought here, came back down, and I was rallying back up on the three-day chart. But every time you've come up on the MFI to get overbought, except for this one little move down, you've had these 15 to 22% drops in gold. Looking at the volume here, you have more buying than selling, but look at the wave of volume. This is volume momentum. I want you to see, look at this wave that came up here. You see this wave that came up? You have it down here in your volume. Look how massive that is. I have to shrink this down to show you how much volume momentum you had. And then look where you are now. It's flatlined. Okay. I don't like the volume divergence here. You can see it here as well. I don't like this volume divergence that I'm seeing here of the low volume candles and the big moves in gold. I do feel like this is going to reset when the equities roll. Okay. That's what I'm feeling. And if I look at this, you could get up to that 2055, maybe just slightly above, like you did twice in the past two years. And when I'm looking at this, guys, I'm looking at these targets, 1521. And if this thing got crushed, if the equities got crushed, look at that 1389 target, okay? But again, if you flip 2055 and hold it, that is very bullish if you can hold it when the equities roll. You're not there yet, but just based on the price action, based on the volume, based on the historical trend of two years, this would absolutely frighten me to be longing here unless you can back test this and hold it as the equities dump, okay? Because a level reset, commodities are always late stage. A level reset, I think, is coming just like it did in the GFC before you have a pronounced bull run in the metals. I think they're coming down for a reset first. Again, that's just my opinion. Same in silver, guys. This big move up, look at this big move, this volume divergent move. The MFI is shooting up, about to get overbought again. And this is where I gave you the last silver trade for a 20% move. We got overbought on the MFI. The volume looks bad. It's a low volume. Again, I don't like this move unless you can hold this move when the equities roll, okay? If silver comes up here, so you may come up here and tag this 26 spot 99. You may come up here to that 25 spot 477. These are realistic targets that you could hit. But again, it's not the target that you're hitting for me. It's can you hold this when the markets roll? That's what I'm interested in seeing. So that's why I'm playing this at. If you get overbought here, watch, be very careful because that's silver getting overbought, gold getting overbought simultaneously as the markets decline. What do you think the bias is going to be? I think it's going to pull down. I gave you that target. Look, I'd be looking at $15, $16 uh, silver if that happens. Okay. Remember GFC gold went down 34%. Silver went down 61%. Just looking at gold because it's so widely traded guys, including by institutional investors. Just look at that 1389 target. You know, I told you before, I hope it doesn't get there, but let's just say it gets up to your 2055. Okay. 2055, just like it did twice in the last two years, coming down to the 1618 is a 32 and a half percent move. It dropped 
34%. I mean, again, market symmetry, market patterns, guys. It dropped 34% in the GFC. It could easily get to that 1389, 1400 target. I don't like how these are setting up, but I can be proven wrong if we hold it when the markets flip. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me some comments. I love to answer your questions and come check us out on our Discord. I think you'd absolutely love it. And you get all of our market maker indicators for free as well that you get to keep for life. Have a happy holiday, everybody. I will see you next week. Take care.